He sums up. Now we are going to discuss about the most important chapter that is audit of items of financial statements. It is the most lengthiest chapter as well. We'll just go slow. Okay, understanding each why this word had been here and all. Okay, first of all, we're gonna discuss about the assertions that were used for audit of P&L account. balance sheet and presentation and disclosures okay first what are assertions assertions were the qualities that management claim that these balances or these events or these transactions have what are the qualities that management claims for the financial statements like they fa finan financial statements were true and fair you these were the qualities that the management claim with regards to the financial statements okay with every item in the balance sheet or pnl account or with every item in like say notes to account or whenever you have been there in disclosures with every disclosure what all the assertions that the management claims okay these were the assertions we are going to discuss about in detail okay for every assertion we going to check uh, with an audit procedures whether management uh, had claimed that this particular transaction or this particular account balance have this particular quality that is this particular assertion assertions were like completeness accu accuracy and uh, occurrence and uh, measurement cut off these were all the like say qualities that management claims for each item in either pnl balance sheet or presentation or disclosure anything okay assertions means qualities that management claim for that particular account balance in the pnl account or for that balance that existed in the balance sheet or for that notes to accounts uh, uh, amount or for that disclosure that the management had given okay now we'll see what are all the qualities that management claims okay for transactions for transactions and balances think transactions as like a sale transaction okay only then if we link this things to a sale transaction then we could easily sync right for transaction mostly it be it would be in pnl account pnl account contains of sale transaction purchase transactions and all these things right okay with regards to the sale transaction okay a transaction is mostly like an action a, an action had been happening there like a sale transaction in order an action had occurred or not okay occurrence of that sale transaction whether that sale transaction had occurred or not okay and second thing is the measurement measurement with regards to any kind of uh, inventory measurement or the uh, selling price measurement anything okay these two are the terminology that icai uses in its standards on auditing and I see. Also, and management also should use the same terminology in either engagement letter or any kind of written representations in the industry standards. Okay, occurrence and measurement were the two important terminology only with respect to the transactions. But if at all, if with regards to balances, what does that mean? Balances you have to sync it with plant and machinery. Okay, say like whether a plant and machinery had existed or not. Okay. Whether the plant and machinery had existed or not, and second thing is the valuation. You see, the, uh, you do not uh, measure that plant and machinery value on and on. You just value that for every year end, right? Measurement was done when it happens only once, a sell transaction or purchase transaction. But a balance is it was recalculated again and again. So that's why they have used the word valuation. They value that every year. Okay, and. Uh, completeness and cut off now we are going to discuss about another um, assertion okay for transactions what were the two things special things occurrence and measurement okay for balances uh, say it is for transaction it is sale and it's a plant and machinery okay a plant and machinery whether that had existed or not and then whether the valuation of plant and machinery have been done correctly or not okay they are saying that management is assertion management giving assertion on the uh, plant and machinery balance that it had been valued properly as per as 16 or uh, some any other st uh, standard or indas that it follows you see the thing that is mostly common in transactions and balances were completeness and cut off okay completeness and cut off both transactions were 
सो मच सो इंटर रिलेटेड ओके सी दिस इज द टाइम पीरियड ऑफ अ बिजनेस इफ यू थिंक दिस इज द टाइम पीरियड ऑफ बिजनेस ऑल द ट्रांजेक्शन हैपन राइट बट ऑर्डर पीरियड या बट दिस इज द ऑर्डर पीरियड वी आर गोइंग टू ऑर्डर ऑफ वन फिनेंशियल ईयर करेंट फिनेंशियल ईयर और प्रेजेंट फिनेंशियल ईयर ओके द ट्रांजेक्शन दट हैड हैपन प्रीवियस वी शुड नॉट टेक आफ्टर अवर पीरियड वी शुड नॉट टेक दिस लाइन इज कट ऑफ okay this is cut off okay from starting point ending point was predefined you, you have you have to not include because there were transaction that had happened before you if you want to audit that because that was on audited before you these all the things you should not add you have to just correctly cut off that to that start point of the financial year for that time period that was given in the engagement letter this is what cut off means what is completeness there were a lot of transaction that had happened in the previous financial year from starting point to ending point we should not take few things and we should skip few we should take whole complete transactions we should not miss any kind of transactions okay we should not include any transaction that were other than this time frame and we should not skip any transaction that uh, comes in our within our time frame this is what cut off and completeness means cut off do not include other than your time period completeness is do not exclude any transactions or any events that are within the time frame okay i think you uh, understood better with this example what does completeness and cut off means okay and with regards to one extra point in the balances were for the plant and machinery about the rights and obligations why rights and obligations you see with uh, only with the inventory we have a right to something only with the liability we have liable to to pay something so uh, rights and obligations comes mostly with the uh, like balances in the balance sheet right like plant and machinery or say any kind of liabilities and all so even for trade receivable trade payables there would be mostly rights and liabilities that have been happening so these were the assertions with regards to transactions and balances okay and with coming to the presentations and disclosures what you have to uh, think is that assertions that the management gives with regards to presentation and disclosures were a particular items were properly classified described and disclosed okay they were properly classified whether it's a current non current or to the heading a uh, headline item and they were properly described and they were properly disclosed as per disclosures of schedule 3 or per as per any act that the company is governing it okay and the transaction have been classified and presented fairly in the financial statements and the determine the disclosures were complete and accurate okay and the information in the manner that does not materially omit distort or mislead the user first thing see the disclosures should be complete and accurate completeness and accuracy were the two things that the management is saying accuracy okay or the two management assertions and every item need to be properly classified described and disclosed okay and every transaction should be the classified and presented fairly and the information should not be materially omitted or distorted to mislead the user okay these were the assertions with regards to the presentations and disclosures and now i want to just introduce this table template to design any kind of audit procedures me uh, when i was just uh, preparing for this audit of items of financial statements i have come across that the the uh, matters or the points that were there were so vague so that anybody who actually even though he reads for 5 to 10 times they might skip a point so i don't want to just uh, make you all remember vague points like that and uh, not i you see not to live in the situation wherever uh, audit is mostly like you have to live in situation and then uh, design the audit procedure and all so we we are going to do that but i want to just introduce you a template so that it gives you a trigger point uh, in the hectic examination situation so that you could just easily write a relevant four to five points that was so uh, it gives you reasonable marks uh, mostly three marks for a qu fourth question is most decent marks for an aofs exam aofs uh, 
question in the examination okay okay this is a template this template you could use it even in the examination or if you were a chartered accountant in practice after you have completed your ca you could use that or if you are doing your work or if you are doing it in articles you could use it anywhere it is that adaptable okay you could use it in practical life and you could use it in the exam scenario also okay let me introduce how to you actually make utilize of this template first thing these were the you see first column has uh, like same inspection observation recalculation analytical procedures inquiry external confirmation reperformance verification tracing what are what are all these aren't these audit procedures these were the uh, weapons that auditor use in order to convert any information into audit evidence right you see if at all there were any documents in the company auditor will inspect them and convert that information into an audit evidence working paper okay these were all the weapons of the auditor he use inspection for what inspection of documents that give evidence for the assertions what assertions the assertion that we have discussed above existence of any kind of balances occurrence of transactions valuation of balances accuracy any kind of transactions or like you could also use measurement here for that assertion that one rights and obligations for any kind of assets balances cut off and completeness for both transaction and balances classification allocation for all items in the financial statement you see classifications and allocation is also mostly a uh, no, classification only allocation is mostly like uh, allocation to uh, uh, revenue and capital like, uh, expenditure and all these were mostly used that word is used mostly there and presentation and disclosure these were all the assertion that management give that is that means all the um transactions or all the balances that were there in the financial statement management claims one or more qualities mostly all qualities for that particular balance okay so these are the qualities that the items in the financial statement has so auditor use these weapons to test the information in the company in order to check whether this assertion was there in that uh, transaction or account balance or not okay with regards to inspection inspection what do he does he does inspection of documents to give evidence for that assertions that management had claimed okay observation what a auditor observes auditor observes process what are the process were that were there in the business internal control procedures that give evidence for the assertions okay recalculation anything that was numerical recalculation of any financial figures and to verify the accuracy mostly like depreciation or actuarial calculation or gratuity calculation analytical procedures analytical procedures is mathematical ratios Math uh, using of financial or non financial information ratio analysis okay inquiry inquiry is You you just uh, ask oral information, inquire the management or employees. External confirmations. You better know external confirmations. What are there for trade receivable confirmation, for vendor confirmation, vendor balance, for the bank balance confirmation, loan balance confirmation, bank. Okay, reperformance. What is reperformance? He's do re doing something that was already done by the management. What does he do? He actually do certain processes. Okay, what is the difference between? Uh, see this is for internal control reperformance is for internal controls observation is also for internal controls when rmm is lower he use observation when rmm is higher he use reperformance okay that's fine and with regards to verification verification mostly happens in two thing two types if at all uh, there was any rule verification mostly like Uh, just like uh, checking whether an inventory was there or plant and machinery was in existence or not that's one type of verification and second thing is there is a rule or there is an uh, as per moa aoa something rule has to be followed we have to verify that this had been followed or not verification could be used in two uh, different uh, scenarios first thing in verifying any plant and machinery or say like any kind of assets or inventories second verification type is there's a rule that will has to be followed whether the ma management or the entity had followed that or not two types of verifications could be there and with regards to tracing tracing is the last uh, weapon that we have 
yeah what is tracing is tracing is following the audit trail from financial st uh, statements audit trail is what entering a single transaction and checking how does it travel through all the ledgers and p and l account balance sheet trail balance and all and ensure the accuracy and the completeness okay with this template in mind we'll just see uh, we'll just order share capital when you issue a share capital okay inspection and existence share capital where do you find that in balance sheet okay inspection what do you what kind of documents do you expect and mostly uh, i wanted to tell you is that in order to check something you have to know what the management had already done so uh, you see audit is mostly like a post mortem you just go and check all the things that were done right so management had already issued share capital on what are all the things that he management has to follow or what are all the things that management has done you have to verify that okay keeping this point in mind with this template in mind we'll just go through this aofs very simply it uh, trust me trust the process trust the template it is a uh, it is first time ever somebody is giving this template here please encourage some and pay some attention so that uh, you could easily write in all the, you could easily design any kind of audit procedure it's not only for the marks it is for your you see after you complete your ca you will be called as auditors so you know you need to at least know how to design an audit procedure by your own self right okay i'm here not only to uh, teach you marks or not only here to uh, teach you what is there in study material but also i want to make you independent so, th so that without me or uh, even without me you could do uh, have some knowledge of audit right okay inspection inspection is a triggering point inspection to existence this is the first triggering point Bal in share capital where do we find we find it in balance sheet so existence in balances existence okay in order to know share capital has existed what we have to inspect whether there have been any resolution that were taken meetings uh, in order uh, to issue some share capital boards will meet right and pass a resolution we have to uh, see that inspect those resolution and since there were meetings we have to also check the minutes of those meetings see certified copies of the relevant resolution passed at the meetings of board of director shareholder in authorizing the increase or decrease in share capital see we have to check the resolution that were taken in the meetings so simple right okay valuation with regards to valuation how do we inspect documents no idea rights and obligations no idea cut off or completeness no idea classification or allocation no idea presentation and disclosure whether there were anything yes share capital they have to um, you see there's a special resolution that have to be taken in order to accept or issue the share capital right so in about there was there they have to actually submit the uh, roc forms right a form of sh7 for the increased in authorized share capital and form pas3 for increase in paid up share capital and form fc gpr in case of fdis foreign direct investments by non resident shareholder ma'am do i have to remember all these forms remember it might uh, be asked in mcqs also okay form sh7 for increasing authorized pas for paid up share capital and fc gpr for fdi okay that's it for the inspection with uh, any kind of recalculations observation since it is not an internal controls that were been happening with regards to share capital there's no points in observation okay we don't use observation weapon here okay recalculation okay share capital contains some kind of um, amounts right okay with regards to rights and obligations we are going to recalculate something whether tally the period and share capital that is closing balance with regards to authorized and issued and paid up to the previous year audited financial statements as to rights and obligations c uh, tally the period and share capital that is closing balance to the authorized plus issued and say like paid up share capital of the previous audited financial statement okay uh, they are saying that 
it is mostly like how much the shareholders have right in that company and all and with regards to the inquiry oral inquiries was whether they were complying with sebi regulations and guidance notes or not okay uh, whom do you ask uh, like cs of that company and with regards to the confirmation external confirmation obtain a written confirmation or representation letter from company secretary that there were no changes to the entity's capital structure during the year with regards to the valuation okay and verification verification is two things whether to check the assets that were existed or not second thing there is a rule that should be happening and whether the company is following that rule or not and with regards to the rights and obligations you see no shares have been issued at a discount shares should not be issued at a discount right so we have to verify whether the shares have been issued at a discount or not and and the next one is with regards to classifications and all securities premium uh, whether that have been applied only for the specified purposes or not the classification and allocation and the premium that have been disc that have been received with regards to the shares whether they have been transferred to securities premium account or not presentation the way you are presenting the securities premium account so so simple you see enquiry with regards to compliance of sebi regulations you could easily write and the resolutions and this uh, this is the forms that they have presented to the mca website and you see the cs written confirmation written confirmation and verifications with regards to rights and obligation and two points with regards to securities premium when shares were issued at a securities premium and shares were issued at premium okay and as we have said in our classification and uh, allocation the securities premium has to be utilized for only specified purposes what are all those uh, purposes you see towards issue of unissued shares of the company to the members as a fully paid up paid up bonus shares for issue of any bonus shares then you can use securities premium second thing writing of preliminary expenditure you could use that and writing of expenses or for the commission paid or discount allowed for issues of shares or debentures see usually securities premium only concerned with its own class you see it do not uh, allocate or uh, it do not apply its amount to any other things other than shares but for the expenses of commissions and uh, the discount that was allowed in shares on debentures you could use securities premium mostly see discount you see shares should not be issued for a discount but you have raised debentures at a discount then you could also utilize the securities premium for that okay there might be a question or uh, triggering you for this discount portion and all okay make sure that for the debentures discount also you could use shares securities premium okay and what are the other two points were first thing what bonus share second thing preliminary expenditure third thing for the any kind of expenditure or commissions for shares or debentures and fourth one is premium payable on redemption of any redeemable preference shares or any kind of debentures okay for redemption premium you could use that and for buyback of shares you could use that okay these were the what all the these were the things in which securities premium could be applied for and when shares were issued at a discount wait shares should not be issued at a discount but why there is a point here why shares have to be issued at a discount we'll see shares shall not be issued at a discount except to sweat equity shares to whom sweat equity shares were issued to whom to employees of the company or for the directors right okay a shares issued by the company at a discounted price shall be void other than this sweat equity shares okay and a company may issue shares at a discount to its creditors okay not only to the employees in or in lieu of um, sweat equity shares they could issue shares at a discount to creditors also for why they have to be issued to creditors converting that debt into shares okay whenever you do not have that much liquid cash into uh, just um, uh, repay the debt you could actually convert them into shares at a discount rate okay and any company fails to comply with the provisions of this company this section such company and officer who is in default shall be liable for a penalty uh, that was shares 
or issued at uh, the issue also of a share at a discount or a five lakh rupees whichever is less you could just uh, read it from here or you could just uh, remember from the monetary limits that we have given in our telegram channel you could just go there and the company shall also be liable to refund all the monies that received with interest at a rate of 12% 12% of interest where have you seen this 12% of interest again in this audit chapter you see after declaring the dividend and that dividend have to be repaid within 30 days if that dividend had been unclaimed it's unpaid dividend it has to be transferred within 7 days to a separate account if not if not have been so transferred to separate uh, account then company has to pay 12% interest okay i'm just uh, making you have that feeling of deja vu that you remember something okay this 12% there okay that's it with regards to the points c two exceptions for the employees that is sweat equity shares and the for the creditors it is that converted into shares okay penalty uh, if they do not follow this or they issue shares other than sweat equity shares and uh, debt converted into shares they will be liable for this penalty and they have to refund all the money with interest of 12% per annum okay issue of sweat equity shares okay now we'll see what is in order to issue a sweat equity shares what are all the points that have to, to be complied with okay you see these are mostly like a law points not audit procedures okay these were all the things that company has to follow not how the auditor uses his weapons of inspection observations in order to check that they have happened or not if at all auditor has to use they have to use which audit weapon that is which audit procedure verification a rule here so he has to use that okay in order to check whether that had been happened or not okay sweat equity shares issue is authorized by a special resolution passed by the company in order to check this rule what the auditor has to do auditor has to inspect the resolutions and that were taken by the company and the minutes resolutions and the minutes you have to inspect that okay the resolution specifies the number of shares current market price consideration that the party gives and the class of directors or employees to whom these shares have been issued first shares so that market price and the consideration they pay for this market price obviously less of person less of right and to which employees that they were giving this uh, what like e equity shares and where the equity shares of the company are listed in a stock exchange the sweat equity shares are to be issued as per sebi guidelines okay first thing they have to give a resolution that resolution contain these all points four points and if at all that was listed you have to take approval or, or do comply with sebi regulations and the right and the rights limitations restrictions provisions as applicable to equity shares shall be applicable to sweat equity shares issued under this section that is there is a uh, no difference uh, between equity shares and sweat equity shares with regards to rights limitations restrictions if at all they have they have to explicitly dis uh, disclose and the ranks the holders of such shares shall rank pari parsu with other equity shares pari parsu is proportionate okay and uh, we have seen share capital issue now we'll see share capital reduction when they want to reduce the share capital what do they have to do they have to uh, again same resolution and all that right see with regards to inspection existence that balance had existed or not first thing an order of tribunal confirming the reduction okay a resolution by shareholders plus a registrar certificate as regards to reduction of capital these all three things you have to inspect as an auditor okay observation uh, there would be no chance of using observation here for the and with regards to the verification check whether they have complied all the terms and condition that were imposed by tribunal or not see here they have to uh, taken the order of the tribunal they have reduced the share capital so they have we have to verify a uh, rule had was there term and conditions who have been imposed by tribunal were followed or not second thing with regards to the rights and obligation whether aoa authorizes reduction of such capital and verify that moa has been suitably amended or not with regards to aoa moa okay whether aoa authorizes or not moa has been amended or not and with regards to the presentation and disclosure what you have to verify is that those were 
as per schedule three or not they have complied with schedule three or not first thing they have to comply with terms and conditions of tribunal second thing a moa have to be amended aoa has to be amended with regard to rights and obligation for the presentation and disclosure schedule three has to be followed what we have to inspect order tribunal special resolution registrar certificate with regards to that and what are all the disclosures for equity disclosures for the equity it's actually mostly a part of schedule 3 also okay see here per value per share that is par value per share is the face value per share and the rights preferences restrictions attaching to each class of shares including restrictions on distributions of dividend and repayment of capital they also have to be uh, disclosed these were in extra other than for uh, schedule 3 right schedule 3 mostly gives a uh, notes to accounts type right the number and the amount of the shares authorized and the shares in respect of each class and the shares in the company by each share holding holding more than 5% up okay and the, if you open a uh, annual report you'll get all these disclosures because it's time consuming for me to show you everything because it's not a regular class i'm just avoiding that okay no tensions in that okay first thing and next thing is that for the period of 5 years immediately preceding the date at which balance sheet is prepared that is prior 5 periods the aggregate number of class of transaction allotted as fully paid up pursuant to contracts without payment received in cash that is uh, say like a plant and machinery has been bought in lieu of that they have uh, exchanged with the shares of the company Okay, such kind of uh, transactions or such kind of uh, shares uh, that were have been allotted for previous five years in in any kind of preceding five years, you have to mention it here and aggregate number of and class of shares that were allotted as fully paid up by way of bonus shares, any kind of bonus shares and shares that have been bought back. If you observe all these transactions, that cash inflow was nil. Okay, either there is a cash outflow. right in cash outflow in case of buyback and bonus share there is no cash inflow cash outflow and there was an inflow in form of any kind of um, inventories or plant and machinery except in cash so uh, these were the things that you bought or uh, you have uh, given shares to somebody without inflow of cash for the preceding 5 years you have to disclose that and calls that were unpaid that is unpaid call unpaid share liability and forfeited shares and shareholding that of uh, promoters you have to disclose in this format like promoter name and number of holding and the percentage of shares that uh, the promoter is holding and if at all there was any changes you have to uh, also include whether plus 5% or 2% in that shares okay utilization of utilization of borrowed funds and share premium you see share premium could be utilized for only five purposes that is buyback of shares bonus shares any commission or discount on redemption of debentures any kind of uh, redemption of preference shares and uh, with regards to preliminary expenditure write off only these five things you could utilize share premium for but how could you utilization what are the disclosures you have to give with regards to utilization of borrowed funds usually borrowed funds have to be utilized for the company own purposes for the purpose it which had been raised for let me tell you a small example that is this is uh, see first of all this is uh, with point of view of company management okay all the whole chapter will see from point of view of auditor but only this portion utilization of borrowed funds and share premium will be we will have to learn from the point of view of company or management okay this company will advance some loan to some other company it's neither a subsidiary nor a associate it might be a subsidiary or associate we don't know but we call it is some a company which is an intermediary company intermediary company is a company is in between okay this company will advance loan or give guarantee to few other companies owned by some other parties you see then see how many layers of your investments or loans were there two layers right now this company has to disclose our company has to disclose 
the amount that we have ad advanced to intermediary companies and the amount of the loan that we have advanced to intermediary companies have to be disclosed by our company second thing the date and amount which intermediary company had advanced or invested advanced loans means in form of debt invested in form of equity and there is no cash flow but they have given guarantee see these banks have taken some loan somewhere else but this intermediary had given a guarantee to some other bank in which these companies have taken loan from this is there is no cash outflow but this company uh, intermediary company had said that if this company to which we have loaned or the third layer company if they do not pay the loan that was taken by this bank we will repay the guarantee that they have given of security with regards to assets in this intermediary company if at all they give this company has to disclose see where a company had advanced or loaned or invested funds in any other person or entities including foreign entities with an understanding that intermediary shall directly or indirectly lend invest in other entities identified in any manner on behalf of this company okay are you getting what i am saying see this is first transaction this company is advancing loaning or investing some money to intermediary companies with an understanding that this company shall directly or indirectly lend invest in these other companies okay then whether they might give loan or as well as a guarantee or security as we have discussed earlier if at all they does this second layer then this company which it had lent an amount to intermediary company has to disclose date and amount of first layer of in uh, loans see the amount that had been advanced loaned or invested in intermediaries okay and this is these two were second layer of transactions the date and amount of fund that further advanced or invested by such intermediaries to other intermediaries or ultimate beneficiary companies these were ultimate beneficiary companies and the date amount that have been guaranteed or a given security okay you have the company has to disclose the first layer of loan second layer of loan also and compliance with fema act pmla act and companies act okay three acts that's it this is what the company has to disclose see the same transaction in another way now we are the intermediary company some other company had sent funds to us see we are intermediary company some other had advanced or invested in our company and we with an understanding that we as an intermediary has to invest or give loan or give guarantee or security for some other companies okay now we as an intermediary has to disclose this first layer of loan plus second layer of loan or guarantee see where a company had received any fund from any other entities including foreign entities with an understanding that company shall directly or indirectly lend invest in any manner on behalf of the funding party funding party is here which had advanced us loan provide any guarantee or security see the date and amount uh, received from the funding parties first la loan second layer of loan see the amount of the fund that had been advanced or loan in invested or the amount that had been guaranteed or security here the dif main difference is here cash flow is present here cash flow is not present okay and obviously the compliance with fema pmla act and companies act have to be disclosed this is so simple okay you could uh, most of uh, students just leave that because of uh, 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 so much of uh, pure law was written pure law language so there is nothing much more uh, to get confused with this with just it's so simple actually yeah and now we'll see audit of reserves and surplus here they have given definition of reserves that means appropriated out of profit there are two types of reserves one is revenue reserves which would be mostly used for working capital or available for distribution of to uh, shareholders in form of dividend okay and capital reserves they are mostly used 
for writing down of fictitious assets or losses or for issuing of bonus shares okay they have given just definition for that now we'll design the audit procedures in order to audit reserves and surplus first inspection first trigger point inspection with regards to existence in order to transfer the profit or surplus or deficit of p and l account the board has to pass a resolution that this much of profit this percentage of profit has to be transferred to this particular reserves so we have to inspect that resolution and the meetings with regards to that if at all uh, they have transferred to the dividend and all you also have to check those resolutions as well and you see it's so simple uh, just uh, they have it is just a journal entry right transferring of profits to some reserves is just a journal entry so which weapon the auditor has to use tracing okay trace and tally the opening balances of uh, the previous year audited financial statement they are checking to just uh, verify the opening balances whether clo closing balance of previous year is equal to opening balance of current year and all the transfers amount whether they have been movement of those were uh, as per resolution or not we have to trace that okay in the statement of changes of equity that's it so simple and with regards to the disclosures of reserves and surplus same as schedule 3 disclosures so types of reserves capital reserves capital redemption reserve securities premium debenture redemption reserve revaluation reserve share options outstanding account others or surplus or deficit balance as per pnl account and with regards to the component of reserves and surplus you see the best way to remember these all items is through fr consolidation sum in fr consolidation sum we usually get get to know all these reserves right so remember the consolidation sum that you have been doing so from so long and just write and nothing to memorize here you all know all the ready and with regards to this see opening balance the components of reserves and surplus say like general reserve i'm taking general reserve in order for to arrive at the closing balance of journal reserve first opening balance if there were any changes errors with regards to previous year that is restated opening balance any changes if any due to change in accounting policy that is restated opening balances and then total profit of that year plus dividends that have been transferred to the revaluation sorry revenue reserve okay and then transferred to dividend retained earnings total profit with uh, regards to dividend and retained earnings and any kind of other changes if at all required and closing balance okay this is how you could write the disclosures with regards to reserves and surplus so simple as that uh, okay now we'll see audit of borrowings first okay first see with regards to inspection and existence what all the things what all the documents we have to inspect while coming into the mind that what it of borrowings first thing loan agreements right we have to inspect the loan agreements before taking loan auditor has to check whether they have any approvals were there or not you see a board has to give an approval okay we'll take loan from this bank this much loan for this purpose and all these are all resolutions also have to be inspected see board minutes for approval of a new lending agreements or make sure new loan agreements were authorized or not you see loan agreements plus board minutes with regards to in which meeting the board had decided to take that loan and you see here in borrowings not only loan but also purchase agreement with regards to the higher purchase agreements you see higher purchase was mostly like same Oh, oh, finance lease was mostly like a loan, obviously, and higher purchase agreements were also comes under this thing only. So we also have to check any finance lease agreements or any kind of higher purchase agreements that were there. And with regards to the completeness on and all, we have to examine the minutes of board of directors of all the contracts or all the confirmations from the banks for subsequent cash disbursement. You see, this is like. a resolution had been happened in the financial year on say like 
28th march but the disbursement had happened on 4th april okay so this loan was technically a loan that had happened or that had been there in the financial statements of books of accounts of the company so we have to examine whether there were any subsequent cash disbursements for the loans that have been taken so we have to check for that and with regards to the recalculation okay what are all the things that one could recalculate in a loan first thing emi and in emi principal portion and interest portion and the rate of interest obviously and closing balance is for the valuation and all for the verification also closing balance is mostly seen okay first we'll see the interest recomputation of interest and if at all the loan was through any kind of bonds or shares then the discount and premium on the redemption okay we have to recompute that and we have to obtain a repayment schedule we have to obtain schedule of short term and long term borrowings showing the beginning and ending balances this is mostly they are talking about the uh, recalculation repayment uh, schedule with regards to that for the how much principal that had been paid in that current year in a repayment schedule what will have the emi and the principal portion interest portion and then the outstanding balance right in order to know how much principal have been paid in that current year we are going to check this schedule of short term and long term borrowings repayment schedule okay this is first thing with regards to the interest second thing with regards to the principal and if at all any kind of assets were kept as a security to take loan and if that market value of the value of that security falls below then it would be treated as a non secured loan for that gap but not as a secured one say like uh, the security you have kept for 70 lakhs and you have taken a loan of say like 50 lakh rupees okay and the security value market value say this is outstanding amount of loan the security market value had fallen to say like 45 lakhs then the remaining 5 lakhs is there right that is what we call unsecured portion of the secured loan so we have to classify that whether it had been on classification yes in classification we have to recalculate the nrv or market value of the security the in which you have kept and took a loan okay this 5 is unsecured portion interest principal and an secured portion of that loan and with regards to the inquiry what do you inquire whether the transaction involved previously undefined related parties we have to inquire for related party transaction whether directors have given any kind of loan or whether they have been provided any guarantee for the loan that were taken by the company we have to inquire for that and with regards to the external confirmation outstanding balances see verify the details of with regards to the lease finance lease and hire purchase agreements we have to check the agreement and in order to know the loan balance and all we have to check the loan agreement and the written representation is that all liabilities recorded represent a valid claim by the lenders that is there is uh, no unconditional obligation that not to repay the loan every lender has a claim has a right over our liability to get repaid okay as we are talking mostly about the external confirmations or confirmation request right okay we'll see the process of confirmation first we'll mail the confirmation request to the selected party whether that the any financial institution whether that be a, a bank or any kind of uh, nbfc anything we'll just send a confirmation request to them if at all they do not reply we'll send them reminders okay till this first portion was completed sending the mails was okay fine and we have to they have replied us back we'll compare the replies to our request okay and then reconcile those exceptions that were there second portion and third portion okay and then trace the reconciling items with regards to supporting documents what they are mostly talking about is if at all any kind of uh, subsequent disbursements were there then the later on bank statements you take and then check for those uh, disbursements and all this is what what they were talking about this is the process of confirmation process and uh, 
and for any kind of um, foreign currency loans this is not current this is currency loans you have to check the exchange rates also and uh, that's it now we'll go to disclosures yeah with regards to verification verification of order of borrowings we have to verify whether the boards have exceeded their borrowing limits or not if your board have some certain power of asking borrowing the limits right say like 5 cr whether they have taken loan of 7 cr or not 7 cr we have to check and verify the ods with the bank confirmation letters and all and we have and we also have to verify with regards to classification is that examine the due dates on loans for proper classification between long term and short term so if at all debentures were have to be repaid within six months then it's a short term right and if at all it is for seven years it's a long term so that's what they were talking about we have to check the due dates which we have to repay in order to classify them as short term or long term and where installments of long term loans falling due within next 12 months you see most of you have been doing in your uh, article ship i guess you see in our re loan repayment schedule there was say like oh, 30 emis that was still pending out of which 12 falls due within the next financial year so what do you treat this as you treat this as current portion or current liability for long term loan right and the remaining how much uh, still that would be pending 18 18 emis and the remaining 18 emis would be at long term liability only this comes in short term this first 12 months emi principal would comes into the short term category this is what they are talking about disclose in the financial statement verify the correctness of the amounts of such installments okay i think most of us uh, do that in our audit right i think you got deja vu of that and tracing with regards to tracing entries closing balances of, of the schedules of the schedules say like a repayment schedules have been the same with the general ledger or not and when debt is closed and show the discharge of received on assets securing the debt if at all a debt has been fully cleared and that debt has been taken by securing some other asset after clearance of that debt the bank has to discharge the asset and has to put that name of the company okay they have to discharge their name from the asset okay now uh, we will deal with the disclosures of borrowing same schedule 3 long term bonds and debentures of b term loans from banks and from other parties deferred payment liabilities and deposits loans and advances from related parties and long term maturities from finance lease obligations okay and other long loans and advances and any kind of if sub further sub classified as secured and su unsecured portion that we have seen in prior right that one and whether loans have been guaranteed by directors related parties we have to inquire okay and bonds and debentures in descending order of maturity descending order of maturity is say like a debenture some have five years three years six months this in this descending order you have to actually present in the notes to accounts with regards to disclosures of debentures and the terms of repayments you have to disclose and current maturities of long term borrowings that is the 12 months portion was there in out of 30 years right the, this one you have to disclose it separately okay and the borrowings from the banks or financial institutions on base of securities of current assets that is they're mostly talking about loans that was taken as working capital loans or uh, say like overdrafts or cc's mostly uh, whether the quarterly returns have been filed by the company are in agreement with the books of accounts or not you see you have seen this somewhere right in caro clause 2 second point working capital loan is more than five year then you have to check the whether the quarterly written stock statements were in agreement with books of accounts or not that the company had submitted to the bank okay and the reconciliation if at all not have been agreed and as per the any kind of loans that they have taken they have to utilize for the purpose it is intended for specific purpose why it is raised you have to use for only that purpose if at all 
they do not use for that purpose then they have to give detail disclose the details for which that have been used for okay and when a company had defaulted the loan and the bank had declared this company as a willful defaulter then the date of declaration of that willful defaulter and details of default again it's a point in caro 2020 and with regards to the registration of charges and satisfaction of register of companies you see any charges of satisfaction yet to be registered with a register of companies beyond the statutory PR details have to be given register of charges on basis of assets like on which bank you have to do like that okay while taking loan we'll just create a charge on those assets right they're talking about that okay now we'll discuss about the audit of trade receivables, which is also relevant for trade payables I have co compiled both the points here okay first thing wait with regards to the inspection and rights and obligations the list of debtors under litigation have to be compared with previous years okay any kind of disputes if at all any kind of disputes were there with regards to any kind of trade receivables or trade payables you have to disclose you have to inspect those documents okay how it had been settled why it has been given here because schedule 3 requires disputed trade receivables which were considered good and which were not considered doubtful and even with regards to trade payables disputed dues were also being asked for a special clarification that's why we have to first and foremost thing we have to inspect the rights and obligations that's the disputes litigations or disputes with regards to any outstanding balances of trade receivables or trade payables and second thing what we have to inspect the period and account receivables aging report why again schedule 3 requests that see in trade receivables aging schedule see if it's less than six months you have to disclose six months to one year you have to disclose one to two two to three years more than three years you have to disclose same for trade payables if it's less than one year you have to disclose one to two years you have to disclose likewise since schedule three asks you to disclose in that information auditor also has to check in that regard okay first disputes and this is aging report okay and what you have to observe whether the re collection if it's a trade receivable where you're collecting correctly or not and invoices cannot be recorded more than once and you cannot uh, treat that as a bad debt and all of, of the overstated sales you cannot treat that as a bad debts and then avoid the profit and all you have to not do that and a clear segregation of duties with regards to identification of debt identification of debt is credit sale okay receipt of income cash sale reconciliations and right of debts that is bad debts and all you see the one who actually deal with the credit sales cannot do the bad debts or writing of debts because there might be a, so much of misutilization of inventory might be happening there so for the writing of debt senior management have to come up you see and balances whether they have been re reviewed and aged regularly whether there's a system was there or not see observation mostly deals with internal controls that's why they're talking mostly about the controls and all and with regards to the recalculation what do we recalculate in the bad debts or trade receivables and all provision for bad debts we do recalculate for the provision for bad debts whether there's adequate provision for bad debts was there or not okay analytical processes what are the ratios man we calculate with regards to trade receivables and trade payables that is bad debts to the sales ratio how much if it is five percent now and um, it was just only two percent previous year why there is a three percent of sales that have turned into bad debts you see whether those was fictitious sales we have to so that uh, it would give us a trend analysis okay and we, what we have to inquire inquire whether the write-offs that had been happened with regards to the bad debts were pop, uh, properly uh, pro authorized by the senior management as we have discussed here one who deals with credit sales cannot do write-off uh, senior management has to do we have to inquire whether they have done that or not with proper authorization and all and external confirmation we obviously know uh, direct confirmation reports for the trade receivables okay and verification 
verification of what whether debts have been properly co collected or not and all the sales were to the approved customers or not if at all uh, see related parties they those were for which it's uh, not at arms length price uh, then that was not approved sales customers right so we have to not make sale for that and the customers who are giving bad debts like 70 percent of their purchases were bad debts only so these were not approved customers so all the sales should be to the approved customers only okay and uh, tracing with regards to tracing the totals on trace receivable or, or receivable trade receivables report matches with the journal ledger and all and with and the sales all the sales have been recorded or not for the com which comes under the completeness and cutoff assertion and the schedule of movements of bad debts and provision for those bad debts have been properly there were not provision for bad debts is different from the bad debts that have been incurred for that pnl right uh, your cf final i think you better know okay so we have to make tracing of that okay now we'll in detail discuss about the direct confirmation procedures okay same like bank we'll just give our direct confirmation see mostly we have uh, seen this in our keyword kit series right the way to communicate and all okay the way to communicate plus uh, uh, when management puts a restriction on auditors law scope and all so com in combination of both we are going to discuss about the direct confirmation procedures okay direct confirmation is confirming to the direct when uh, trade receivables and trade payables right contact the customers or vendors directly and ask them to confirm the amounts that is what direct confirmation procedure is but why come a vendor or why how come is a customer who is in relation with only to the company will give us their account balance detail as so because we are an auditor so company has to ask them to provide information to us so uh wait see uh, this should be done for all significant account balances that's fine we know that employees direct confirmation procedures with the consent of the entity the so entity's consent should be important in many situations management of the entity request auditor not to seek confirmation from certain trade receivables that is restriction on scope whenever there is a restriction on scope what we have to do when there is a restriction on scope what we have to do first we have to ask for reasons if those reasons were genuine then okay we will do some further audit procedures and obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence we will check for that okay if at all sufficient appropriate audit evidence could not be found by doing some additional audit procedures then we'll just communicate to tcwg or just give a disclaimer opinion or withdraw from the audit engagement if at all the reasons were only not genuine directly we'll communicate to the tcwg and then we'll either give a disclaimer of opinion or withdraw from the engagement this is how actually the process goes right okay now they have put some restrictions say like the reasons were genuine and we wanted to do some additional audit procedures what are those additional audit procedures agreeing the balance to the cash received you see the balance out is outstanding on 31st march have been received later on say like 15th april were both were the same then that's fine that's further audit uh, procedure additional audit procedure and second thing is agreeing the detail of respective balances to customer remittance advice uh, remittance advice is uh, similarly like uh, it mostly what do we call is a uh, banks you customers actually say bank to bank or say like it's paying agent or like say like it's manager to pay some amount to this company that is we or uh, the entity which we are auditing so both the amounts were tallying the customer asked its assistant or its bank to pay our company in which it's getting audited was the same that that's fine first thing 
he had already paid second thing he advised to pay the same equal amount okay that's fine and prepare a detailed analysis of balance ensuring the identifiable transaction and confirming that these revenue transaction are actually occurred it is just no payments were there no advice for payments were there but just the sales with regards to the sales we have arrived to the outstanding balance as of this okay that's fine prepare a final summary of results and draw the con final conclusions okay these were the further audit procedures that auditor could perform if at all company or management refuses to ask for direct confirmations okay the form of requesting could be either positive or negative positive for large balances negative views for small balances same a list of trade receivables selected for confirmation should be given to the entity for preparing request letters for confirmation okay that's what with reg uh, regards to this is how a direct confirmation procedure happens and now we'll discuss the cutoff test okay we have been seeing about uh, cutoff and completeness right okay what is cutoff you see there were a lot of transaction that have been happening prior a lot of transaction that are happening after the accounting period okay this particular time uh, frame cutting off that only selected time period is what cutoff tests were not including the transactions before not including the transactions occurred thereafter that okay first let me give you one simple example what it is first a sale transaction had happened on say like 29th march but the customer asked to deliver the goods on 5th april okay on 31st march we had done what Uh, say like a stock valuation and all, a stock testing count and all, and we, the company had included the stock that belongs to this third party, the customer, which had sale had already happened and included in the closing stock. Plus, since it's a credit sale, he had also included the debtors also, debtor balance also. How actually a credit sale journal entry has to be? Debtor account debtor to select sales account right sales is uh, they have to reduce the closing stock okay they have to reduce the closing stock and all but in they have not reduced the closing stock you see there's a wrong in this journal entry if a, if an asset has to increase if debtor asset has to increase then closing stock has to decrease for the say or uh, first uh, might be same amount or different amount but it has to decrease but closing has stock has remained the same but debtor asset had increased that is what sales overstating was that is overstating of profit this cut off test we have to check for see for the invoices issued last few days closer to the cut off date which have been included in the debtors debtors deb increased and the goods have been dispatched and not lying with the company and included in the closing stock you see actually the goods should have been dispatched and should not be lying with the company but the goods were with the company and they have included that in closing stock this is a wrong thing we have to check for these type of transactions and then delete this closing stock okay and we'll see the second uh, second example invoice dates to the shipment date invoice date is the date in which invoice have been issued by the company and shipment date is when goods have been dispatched to the customer okay say like invoice was dated on april 5th and goods are dispatched on march 29th you see the sale had already happened but invoice have been not issued till april 5th due to some technical errors or say see a sale had already happened that's why the company had transferred its uh, stock uh, to the customer place and uh, due to some technical errors and all they have issued the april here but they wanted to include this sale in next financial year could do okay, could they do that so no they could not do that so they were understating the sales so you have to check for these kinds of transactions with regards to make sure that whether the sale is uh, happening in this current accounting period or not and 
we'll see the third example review the you see a customer had ordered for uh, say like 1000 boxes but the uh, so, but the company had sent 10000 boxes in order to show that the sale had happened for 10000 in the last financial last days of the financial year and later on the customer had return the 9000 boxes you have to check for these kind of transactions also you see review the receiving log to see any kind of large amount of customer returns had happened uh, which ha company had shipped more goods near to the end of the accounting period than the customer had authorized the company to send okay you have to check for these three kinds of transactions first thing is Closing stock included, debtors included. You have to check for those transactions. Second thing, invoice dates and shipment dates were two different things. You have to make sure on which date sale had happened as per the law that was governing and then do check the uh, uh, do check whether to include that sale transaction or not. And third thing is uh, the company had dispatched a lot of orders even though a customer had not asked for. So uh, they should uh, make sure that uh, they do not include these uh, fictitious uh, movement of goods that were there as a sales. You have to check for these three transactions as under the current cutoff test. Okay. And with that said, um, we'll just, uh, we have seen this schedule right in our schedule three also. Trade receivable schedule three, undisputed trade receivables good undisputed trade receivable doubtful disputed trade receivables good disputed doubtful and difference between secured and unsecured portion and um, if at all bad and doubtful does they also have to be disclosed separately if at all debts are due by directors or the companies in which directors are is a director or a member okay and this is trade payable schedule less than one one two 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 to three more than three years msme others are disputed disputed dues others and msmes and uh, these were again repeated if at all advances outstanding more than six months you have to uh, uh, give disclosures with regards to any disputes were there or not and a complete list of statutory dues that were pending and you have to also disclose with regards to the review process of the all debts that being written off and uh, check the written off were as per appropriate method and authorized member were doing that written offs or not okay and now we will see the audit of cash and cash equivalents okay first what are the things that comes into your mind when we talk about cash and cash equivalent first thing cash at bank okay the cash but where that we have in our bank account that is company's bank account and cash in hand cash in hand that is like petty cash or for any kind of expenditure disbursement and all and uh, any kind of fds that we have in our bank okay first with regards to see we'll design our audit procedures first with regards to cash at bank see there's a particular balance in the bank statement that's showing this is what the outstanding balance and we have some other uh, balance figure that was there in our books of accounts so in order to reconcile these two balances what is prepared brs is prepared so with regards to brs what or uh, around brs what all the audit procedures have to be performed first thing inspection under inspection uh, for checking of valuation whether brs had been signed by the accountant brs is nothing but the accountant of the company will reconcile all the items why all the items which create a difference between the balance in the bank statement to the balance in books of accounts okay whether that had been properly signed or by the accountant or not we have to uh, check for in, in under inspection we have to check that and for the cutoff and completeness we have to check whether brs contains all the bank accounts that the company has okay first thing that has to be approved by the head of finance or somebody else and the brs the bank account all the bank accounts have been included or not and now we'll see the cash that was in hand first if for the cash that was in hand what we'll do we'll do mostly surprise checks calculation we'll do some calculations and we do some surprise checks if at all there were more than two balances cash balances we'll do them 
simultaneously okay we'll perform the surprise check simultaneously and for the verification we have to verify the cash as on the date of reporting period you see it is not possible to do surprise checks as on 31st march right so what we'll do is that we'll actually add or reduce or adjust the items with regards to to arrive the balance as on 31st march for the year end okay so we'll do verify that and we have we will also trace the receipts and payments up to the date till he counts the cash that is uh, this is what the adjusting events that we have been talking about okay these were all the audit procedures that you do with regards to the cash and cash equivalents and now we'll see how brs will be prepared okay or oh, we'll go in detail how brs is first of all see why there would be a difference between the balance that was in bank and the balance that was in books of account you see bank had entered few transactions like say it had deb uh, debited the fees like credit card fees or any kind of fees and it had uh, just debited uh, sorry credited the interest and all which we do not know or which we have not entered in our books of account or in books of accounts uh, say like company had issued some checks checks were issued to the company and in books of account they have been debited debited is bank balance had been reduced but that vendor that was there or somebody else had not presented that check in the bank till then in in between period there had been a 31st march had happened so these differences checks issued but not presented by the person in the bank account and second thing is checks are deposited somebody had given us checks but uh, we had deposited that in bank and we had entered into our books of accounts but bank now has not cleared that yet it will take one or two days right bank had not cleared that checks these are all the things that create a difference in between right so we'll see that tallying the balance as per bank statement uh, through a bank confirmation statement which contains this account balance is this much okay checking off all the material reconciling items including checks issued but presented for payment to the underlying bank forming part of books of accounts you see checks issued but not presented for payment and the auditor should request the bank statement for subsequent period in order to check whether they have been uh, presented in that subsequent period or not okay and checking all material reconciling items like checks are deposited but not credited see here checks issued but not presented here second one check deposited but not credited so we'll also have to do subsequently tally the with regards to the bank statement whether they have been debited or credited respectively okay and checking all material reconciling items like amounts that were debited and credited by bank but not accounted in books of statement okay these were all the items that we have discussed till now and with regards to the direct confirmation procedure say well, first we'll give uh, will contact to the bank or financial ins uh, institution and directly ask them to confirm the amount and that's it if at all any kind of uh, discrepancies were there we'll just investigate and disc uh, reconcile those discrepancies these were the direct confirmation processes with regards to bank and these were the disclosures of the cash and cash equivalent schedule three disclosures balances at bank checks drafts on hand cash on hand all the three things we have discussed it earlier and others if at all they were there and year mark balances with the banks that is unpaid dividend and balances with bank to the extent of margin money or security under against any deposit borrowing mostly margin money is if at all it's trading with shares and all the money that you put it in uh, with the broker uh, in the account so that it would act as a security for the broker for the fluctuations in the market price okay and repatriation restrictions is like at all you have earned in the forex then you have to repatriate within one year or 90 days or nine months i don't remember the time frame you on you know that time frame right so those repatriate and restrictions which you find it in international taxation yeah and fds 
yeah fds for more than 12 months have to be separately disclosed you have to not uh, treat it as a non current asset since it is or uh, due date was it had been kept for 18 months and all you have to include that in cash and cash equivalents if at all it is you have to separately disclose if it's more than 12 months okay we'll see audit of inventory first what are all the things that comes into your mind with regards to inventory first thing while purchasing inventory will have some invoices that uh, create right that we have we own that inventory that's one thing since it's an inv invoice is a document what we'll do we'll do inspection okay that's fine and mostly uh, with regards to the valuation a uh, closing valuation nrv inventory has to be valued at cost or nrv whichever is lower so that you have to do recalculations audit weapon okay and the next thing that comes into your mind is physical verification uh, and the condition of the inventory and all these all comes to your mind and uh, mostly the most um, point that comes into your mind is that goods our goods lying at third party's place and third person goods were lying at our place for this you need to require confirmation reports okay keeping in mind all these things we'll just draft or prepare our audit procedures around inventory first thing inspection with regards to existence you see physical inventory amounts to perpetual records and with regards to valuation the vendor price list determine the cost okay and the with regards to the rights and obligation collateral agreements or purchase commitment agreement and invoices for the evidence of the ownership okay and uh, dealing with observation observations mostly is internal controls inventory counting procedures inventory count and as a time various stages of production how they were measured we see working process it is like 10% completion 25% completion 75% completion at which stage you will determine this how much percentage have been completed okay these observe internal controls you have to observe and recalculation recalculation is mostly with regards to the valuation of inventories you see a valuation of damaged or obsolete inventories uh, you have to observe them in the physical counting process and estimate a realistic net realizable value since valuation of those items would be cost or nrv whichever is lower so you have to make sure the nrv is properly evaluated or not okay and with regards to the analytical procedures you compare the standard cost with the actual cost if it's all the production company and you have to check off for the inventory turnover ratio and compare budget with regards to the expectations to actuals and uh, dealing with the external confirmation if our stock company's stock was at third party a declaration by third party has to be given on his business letter head that confirming the inventory belong to the entity and not the third party is just holding on his behalf mostly like a job worker he had been kept that okay at re performance re performance for the ascertain the elements that have been included in the cost with regards to valuation and verification is you have to verify the inventory whether they have existed or not for that you have to do test counts and with regards to the valuation you have to check the invoices okay and for this uh, rights and obligation you have to check are the underlying documentation with regards to purchases and all and for tracing you see you need not remember everything you just remember five to six point out of so many audit procedures okay and for the tracing you have to check whether the uh, inventory list was there right that list to the journal entry controls and arithmetical accuracy you have to check for that and purchase and sale cut off test that we have seen already discussed right cut off test okay we have to check for those these were all the audit procedures around inventory and for the test counts in detail how the test counting will happen first ensure that employees are counting as per management plan management do not do the work employees do the work you have to make sure as per management plan the employees were doing the test counts or not and ensuring all the items are properly tagged or not you see we have serial numbers right how many chairs were there how many plant and machinery had been there with a specific barcode or a qr code we have to check for that or if at all a serial number also no problem 
ओके एंड स्टे अलर्ट इन ऑल टाइम्स एंड बी कॉशियस अबाउट द एम टी बॉक्सेस एंड एस्टाब्लिश अ कट ऑफ बाय डॉक्यूमेंटिंग लास्ट रिसीविंग रिपोर्ट एंड शिपिंग डिटेल्स ऑफ द पीरियड विच वी हैव discussed in our cut off test right did you remember the second example in cut off test the same here ensuring exclusion of third party stock damaged or obsolete stock okay you have to exclude the third party stock this is first example in cut off test okay that we have sold to some other third party but he kept he asked to deliver us later on period so we have to not include that because we do not have right on that closing stock we have already sold that and investigate for any differences in stock physical stock that had been counted and the stock records that were there and auditor should ask the client personal to sign the stock count sheets okay that's it these were with regards to test counts of inventories and these were disclosures for inventories for raw materials working process finished goods for manufacturing entity if it's a trading entity stock in trade and later on stores and spares of any kind of plant and machinery or loose tools and others and goods that were in transit and mode of valuation shall be stated okay that, that's it with